Okay, well, welcome back. So, anyway, it is early in the morning. Well, not actually so early, nine o'clock in the morning. And guys, what a tutorial I've got for you today. All right, what we're going to do is we are gonna see how to add HTML into our reports. Now, let me explain why that's so significant. Um, that gives us the ability now to be able to utilize all that free web stuff like I'm gonna be showing you, all that free special formatting and really turn our reports into quite interactive, you know, quite interactive um, platforms. Plus, let me explain something else too. You've got 100% control now over the interface. Now that's very significant because when you think about this now, this means that you can choose any type of formatting you want or be able to output that report in any sort of way that you want to. That's extremely important. Now, the other thing we're going to do too is we're going to work on some basic formatting rules. You're going to see a few tricks like how to add links and do things like that. Um, why? Well, very, very standard, very, very standard to be able to do, but mainly because these are things that we need to be able to do a report. So we got a short but sweet section coming up today. Hope you guys love it. Looking forward to teaching it to you as always. Um, see you in just a second on the, on, on the actual demonstration. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, so anyway, we are back now, so welcome back again. And we're going to go ahead and continue our tutorials. Now this time, <clears throat> just for those of you who are going to be doing the lab too, and I hope all of you will be, we're going to go ahead and actually do the format text report builder tutorial, okay? So, <clears throat> forgive me guys, sorry about that with the voice. The format text report builder tutorial um, is really interesting. It's got a few hidden tricks in there that, you know, if you just do it initially, you may not catch. Like, for example, how to add HTML, very, very significant. How to add links over here, very, very important too. And then a couple things that we've already done. So if you've been doing the tutorials already, you've, got, you've already seen how to make vertical sort of text over here like this to save space, and we've discussed the reasons why. Um, you've seen some formatting already on how to do fills and things like that. So again, um, not much there. And then you've seen how to add a template. So not much new there. But like I said, short but sweet is how I, is how I would basically um, characterize this one. Now, let's click on reports. And as you guys have seen me do now tons of times on the first, you know, on the very first, you know, I guess um, um, three different sections, you know, um, basic table matrix freeform. Um, we're going to go ahead and launch report build builder. So files, new document, and there's the report builder report type. So launching report builder from SharePoint 2013, clicking open. You can launch it from SharePoint 2010 too in the same way. It won't look the same um, as far as on this interface, but it'll look very similar. We'll click run. Just to get us started here. Now I'm going to let Report Builder come up just as normal as we've been doing all together, all along. And like I said, everyone sees the re everyone sees what we're using over here, so everyone sees the tutorial to go ahead and do. Um, when I'm all done with this, I am going to throw in an optional section on how to set up a um, set up a tutorial environment. Um, really, all you need is SQL Server 2012, though. That's it to be able to do these. Um, even 08R2, you could you could follow along and then and then do the 08R2 version. Over here, it would be slightly different. Um, just a few things would be slightly different, but not much. And the fundamentals are still the same up until this point. When we get to Power View, it's different. But over here, though, the fundamentals are still very similar between 08R2 and between 2012. Okay, now, once, once I finish that, let me bring up my report. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to start with what we talked about yesterday. Um, how do we do blank reports and whatever? So we're going to create a report from scratch rather than with the wizard. So I'm going to come down to blank report, and I'm going to click on that. Okay, now the very first step I'm going to do again is create a data source. And by now we've discussed this a lot inside the previous tutorials, right? Um, store text that tells you <clears throat> the, lo the name of the database, the, us um, the username and password to use, um, and also to the server where the database is located. So there's new, and then there's data source. In the data source over here, we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and take this data source and I'll call it text data source. So I'm naming the data source as normal. Their credentials again, and we all under um, their credentials. But I need to finish up the data source before I enable them. So let me just come over here real quick and click general. Um, then we're going to tell it to use a connection embedded in the report in this particular case. So there's an embedded connection, which means it stays with the report only. Then I'm going to click on build right over here, and I'm going to make it on localhost. There we go. And I'm going to choose AdventureWorks 2012, which is a free database that you can download from Microsoft and then attach to SQL Server and they've got the they've got the instructions and I'll probably include a um I'll probably include a video on how to set up a lab environment for any of anyone who's interested. So now I'm going to click okay. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click credentials 
and then um, just give it a username and password. And, and I remember I said on the other videos, this is not something you'd probably have to do. This is only because I haven't finished setting up my SharePoint dev environment. I had just made it a few days ago, and I've had to sort of prioritize my time with, um, with getting ready for the certification exam. So certification exams, I should say. So until I set up Kerberos, which I'll have to eventually to be able to display some other functionality, functionality especially with some of the other BI tools, um, I have to do it this way. There we go. Okay. Now, once I've got text data source over there, the next thing I want to do is get a data set. And we talked about what data set is already, and I've, come, and I've repeatedly said it, that a data set, right, is just going to be the actual, the actual data that the report uses. Now, initially in an environment, it comes down as just column names, which are known as fields, right? Then later on, when we click run on a report, it actually brings in the set of data that the report's using. Um, so I'm going to click data sets over here. Then I'm going to go ahead, and this time I'm going to click on add data set. Now, your course told you to click on new data set. Both ways are equivalent. Remember I said there's 10 ways to do every single thing in SSRS Report Builder. So there's, there's, there's data sets right over there. And then I'm going to name it text data set. Then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to use a data set embedded inside of the report. And what I'm going to do over here is once I finish using that data set embedded inside of the report, I'm going to tell it what data source to use, so where it can find the actual data at. And the truth of the matter is this is kind of deceiving because this is connecting to AdventureWorks. It could connect to any database. Um, it just needs a database to be actually running because we have an, what's known as an embedded query, which means that our query contains all the information inside of it. it. Clearly, in real life, that's a very rare type of case. We actually will be connecting to databases. So that's the reason why I keep having us connect to AdventureWorks. Plus, should I have the chance to come back and do some of the other tutorials, it'd be good to know this, believe me. Okay, now, once we finish that over there, there's our actual data set. And I'm going to click on Query Designer. And I said this is a best practice to always click on Query Designer and test your query first. Some queries I mentioned before, so I'm, so I'm going to click on Edit as Text, by the way. Some queries, though, will run in SQL Server Management Studio, but will not run in SSRS. The way to know is to test it in here. So I'm going to click Run. There we go. And then I'm going to click OK. It runs just fine. So we all see that over there. And now I'm going to click OK over there. OK. Now I've got a bunch of fields over here. Now the first thing the core, now the first thing this tutorial wanted you to do, and I thought about this, and I thought, you know what? That's a very good point. I'm glad that it did that. Is it wants to show you the wrong way to be able to add a field to a blank report. So this is when you don't have a table or whatever else, right? So let's just say that we wanted to add full name. I'm going to come over here for full name. <clears throat> so there's the full name field. Then I'm going to add it to the report, just like this. Okay. Now when I add it, let me click Run. So I've added full name over here, and I clicked Run in this particular case, right? And waiting for it to run, waiting for it to render. In just a moment, it will. And look, there's only one name. That's it. Wait a minute. Didn't we put more full names inside that data set? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. We definitely did. So what's going on in this particular case? Well, what happens over here is notice what, look at the formula, and it'll tell you what's happening. It says, give me the first result retrieved from the column, right, or from fields called full name dot value which is it um, dot value which means gives me the first result from that particular column and then from the text data set there's the text data set right over here so what's happening guys is that essentially it's only pulling the very first result that's what it'll do whenever you drag over drag over drag over a field it'll create a text box and just supply one value only the first one um, if that's not what we want though which is clearly not what we want in this particular case then what we do is we don't do it that way. We don't drag it over directly. So let me just click on this for a moment. Hit delete. Then instead, let me click on insert. And then on the data regions, let me come back now. And now let me click list. Okay. Now remember that a list from our very last lecture is going to be something that repeats, 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 right? And I said that when you group it, you essentially group it into distinct values, right? And then those repeat um, usually on every single page after you enable it to break after each and every single case of a list. Now, what they're showing over here is that if we wanted to actually see all of the full names that were actually listed, let's bring this in here and watch what happens. <clears throat> now, let's turn around and click Run. And now, notice what's happening over here. On every single page, it'll turn around now and actually list them. So there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. 
And if we wanted to make it, and if we wanted to make it to where, it, and if we wanted to make it to where it just only used the distinct ones, distinct values like just Fernando Ross or on one page and Lauren Johnson, you guys saw how to do that in the previous tutorial where we came down and we created a parent group, and then after the, adding the parent group, um, we came down and eventually deleted details. So that's just an example of how to use a list freeform type to be able to get some control like for on every single page where you make maybe just one name or whatever else. And we did that example exactly in the last section. So I won't spend too much time here. Okay, so I press delete over there and that gets us down on the tutorial so far over here. So, so far we've just noticed that, you know, really when looking at it, all we saw was how not to add a text box so far. Not really much there just yet, um, that's, that's new. And we saw that the first function over there only retrieves the first value. That's something that commonly gets people though whenever they're first starting out. We're like, why won't it show all the things? I just dragged the text box. And we saw there was an expression called first in there that was actually causing that issue. Okay, now, <clears throat> let's say that we want to go ahead and stay at now and add a table and start adding hyperlinks and seeing some real benefits. So I'm going to come back over here and get started. All right, now, first thing to remember over here is whenever we add a table, right, tables are known as data regions, which means that they've been set up to display data. So whenever I add a table, I'm going to first come down to insert, which is insert is where we find all this stuff to add. And by now, we've done matrix and list data region. Then I'm going to come down over here and I'm going to click on table and I'll just then click on the table wizard, which takes me through the process of creating a table. First, it's going to ask for a data set, right? Because we've got to feed some data into the table. So I choose text data set right over there and then I click next because I'd already created it. Now, once I've finished doing that, I've got an arrange fields panel, right? And remember I talked about, <clears throat> remember I talked about the value section, which is row by row, and then, I and then the row groups, and then the column groups we've also talked about, right? Which actually group things together. So what I'm gonna do over here is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and drag territory to the row groups. And then what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna drag link text and product. So there's territory, there's link text, and then there's product right over here, okay? So now I'm gonna be able to group by someone can drill down from territory into link text into product right over there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it the sales field of values. So what these are gonna be grouping is essentially the values within sales, right? And we talked already earlier about what sum means and what these aggregations are, the ways that we summarize, not add. Um, it could be add if we say sum, but summarize values, average, max, addition, things like that, okay? Now I'm gonna click next right over here. On the layout, I'm gonna leave these defaults and leave expand and coll um, collapse groups so then that way I can actually block it out. You guys see the blocks, it's territory, link text, product right over there. So I'm gonna leave all that right in there and then I'm gonna 